In order to comprehend the significance of moving beyond a victim mentality, it is crucial to understand that it does not entail disregarding one's past experiences. Rather, it involves acknowledging the events that occurred and the emotions they aroused, which may have caused persistent negative thoughts and feelings such as resentment or anger. Despite the fact that these feelings are understandable, the story can become so captivating that it prevents an individual from letting go of the past and moving forward. This can obstruct the development of a higher energy field. To work on this issue, I recommend focusing on forgiveness and relinquishing the role of victimhood, which will enable you to connect with your deeper self. The deep eye is the source of self-awareness that is rooted in consciousness, as opposed to the surface eye, which refers to one's personality. It is important to recognize that the thoughts and emotions you are experiencing are a result of actual events that occurred. However, Continually replaying these events in your mind and identifying as a victim can become a habitual pattern that persists for years, if not decades. To overcome this, it is essential to acknowledge the importance of moving beyond a victim identity while simultaneously recognizing that something painful occurred in the past. Understanding the importance of transcending victim identity is not about denying what happened to you, you fully recognize and acknowledge the events that occurred and the emotions that they have created. However, it is crucial to recognize the capacity of humans to inflict suffering on others, including children, both individually and collectively. Collective egos can be dysfunctional, dangerous, and even lethal, leading to conflicts, warfare, and atrocities worse than those committed by individuals acting alone. When individuals identify with a collective entity, such as a country, political party, or religion, it can create the illusion of being selfless and free from ego. But this is not the case, as adopting a group ego amplifies individuals' egos. This collective ego requires enemies to survive and expand, leading to a deep unconsciousness and identification with victim identity. It is possible to love one's country or belong to a religious group without identifying with a collective ego and seeing others as enemies. Being aware and appreciative of differences can help individuals move beyond victim identity and break free from the mental prison created by the mind. It is important to recognize that bad things have happened, but victim identity is still a form of ego and can impede personal growth. The issue at hand is how to escape the mental prison that one might be trapped in. One possible first step is to understand that when people are unaware, they are controlled by the thought patterns that are ingrained in their mind. In essence, individuals with no awareness have no free will because their entire being is governed by past experiences and conditioning. This concept is similar to the biblical quote, forgive them for they know not what they do, which suggests that individuals may be unconscious of their actions. If this quote were phrased in modern terms, it might indicate that people are entirely unconscious. When individuals operate at a certain level of consciousness, they can't act beyond it. Consequently, their actions might be compared to natural phenomena, such as being struck by lightning or living in an environment that is harmful to one's health. For example, my father had frequent outbursts of anger that made it feel like we were living beside an unpredictable volcano. However, he was unable to control his behavior, and there was no possibility of him acting differently. This is because humans are driven by their unconscious conditioning, which often dates back to their childhood experiences. I eventually realized that my father's anger originated from his childhood. Therefore, people's unconsciousness may determine their actions, and they may not possess free will in those instances. After a while, I harbored resentment towards my father's behavior. 
It wasn't until I was able to detach from my egoic perspective that I realized there was no other way he could have acted because he lacked awareness. When you reach this understanding, you stop identifying or characterizing individuals based on their unconsciousness because that's not their true nature. The first step towards forgiveness is recognizing that without awareness, humans cannot act beyond their conditioning. However, arriving at complete forgiveness may still be a challenge. This realization might prompt the question, are humans not accountable for their actions if they are unconscious? Should we not punish them for their crimes? Are they not at fault? It's a fascinating question. Even if you can forgive someone for their misdeeds due to their unconsciousness, it does not absolve them of the consequences of their actions. While recognizing that unconsciousness limits one's ability to act beyond their conditioning, it's important to acknowledge that individuals are still responsible for the consequences of their actions. Forgiveness doesn't mean absolving someone of accountability or condoning harmful behavior, but rather releasing the negative emotions associated with the situation and choosing to move forward without holding on to resentment. This can also involve setting boundaries and taking steps to protect oneself from further harm, while still acknowledging the humanity and potential for growth in others. In order to break free from the mental prison of victimhood, it's necessary to acknowledge the significance of forgiveness and letting go. However, it's also crucial to understand that humans are often under the influence of their conditioning and ego, which limits their ability to act beyond their level of awareness. This lack of awareness does not excuse them from the consequences of their actions. Rather, it means that they cannot change their behavior without increasing their consciousness. Forgiveness towards those who have caused us harm is not equivalent to condoning their actions or holding them unaccountable. Rather, it involves acknowledging that their conduct is influenced by their conditioning and they may not be fully aware of the impact of their actions. Forgiveness is a process of freeing oneself from past pain, and it does not necessitate that the other party apologizes or alters their conduct. It's about taking responsibility for one's own emotional well-being and freeing oneself from the constraints of victimhood. To move past the victim mentality, one must foster awareness and recognize how their conditioning has influenced their thoughts and behavior. By doing so, one can begin to take responsibility for their own thoughts and actions, instead of blaming others for their suffering. It's about accepting the past without allowing it to define or restrict one's capacity for personal development and healing. To move beyond the victim identity, a change in outlook and a commitment to personal growth is necessary, which may be difficult but ultimately worthwhile.